Okay. I'll let you tell me the history. Because the path is pretty darn classic here. Anyone do it from 2x? So tender erythematous nodules on the lower extremities. Tender erythematous nodule on the lower extremities. Absolutely. Any young woman who recently started oral contraceptives, right? That's the classic, like, test question. So, yeah, this is uh, what, then? Uh, enodosum. Yeah, erythematodosum. So, paniculitis, uh, the paniculitides, I think, are confusing because we talk a lot about septal versus lobular. And I feel like in real life, there's often a lot of overlap. But one of the ones that holds the most true to the septal versus lobular, I think, is enodosum. It really is a predominantly septal process. And for any, any of you guys who are beginners, uh, what that means is that the lobules, the subcutaneous fat lobules, have relatively minimal inflammation or involvement by, by infl inflammatory cells. And the septa in between the fat lobules, which are normally present but very thin, if you look at normal subcutis, there are thin little bands of collagen that divide the lobules of mature fat. And those get inflamed and fibrotic, and then because of that, they widen and get really thick. So even from low power, you can see that the lobularity of the subcutis is very dramatically um, highlighted for us because the septal areas are so thickened and widened. And when you go look closer in those, and it depends on the stage, uh, early um, uh, erythematodosum can be more richly inflammatory and less fibrotic. You can have some hemorrhage and neutrophils. And then as it kind of progresses on and gets chronic, that tends to turn into kind of fibrosis with uh, granulomatous uh, reactions, so histiocytes, sometimes giant cells. I feel like you often see EOs, lymphocytes, and you know, you get a little bit of involvement of the fat. Again, septal paniculitis versus lobular paniculitis, in my experience, not it's not a perfect clear-cut line, but it works the most here. So this is, uh, this is a nice example of the changes you'll see in the septa, uh, septa, excuse me, of the fat in um, erythematodosum, and I think some of these little granulomas here, I think that people have called them Miescher's radial granulomas, if you like buzzwords. I don't know if that's really the best example, but there's like a little, a little granuloma right here. So that's nice erythema nodosum. There were some giant cells. Really good example and a really awesome biopsy. Look at that. Because see, a regular punch, if you just did one punch and got down to here, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything on that. So if you're lucky enough to get, I mean, that's amazing to get a punch intact all the way down here. It's wonderful. But in real life, if you're biopsying for paniculitis, as I think you guys all know, uh, do a double punch. If you need to, punch once, and go back down into the punch biopsy hole and take another piece down into the fat. I know it's hard because it bleeds a lot. Um, a wedge or elliptical incisional, you know, an ellipse bi uh, bi um, excision, excuse me, incision. Um, so doing like a wedge biopsy is the best thing, but obviously that, that does take uh, more time and is more involved. And, um, and so I understand that it's not always feasible and practical to do, but, but that is the ideal uh, scenario for diagnosing paniculitis. But in a pinch, a double punch biopsy will do just fine most of the, in most cases. So there you go. Here's the amenodosum. Thank you.